Is. So we currently have the people that are able to supply some hotspots put up their hands. Thank you so much for uh, those who are able to. Um, we have Audrey plus three others. I uh, believe Sarah and uh, was it? Mel. Oh, and Mel and David over here. Uh, so uh, for the for the hotspots, uh, we'll share passwords. Um, just ask if you're a nearby friendly hotspot providing person. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll give you an update as soon as the robot gets back. Thanks very much.
And since October 1st in 2016, when Audrey Tan became uh, the digital minister, she helped form police and call for passionate civil servants who are familiar with planning, communication, and digital tools to be part of the police group. We later call this group um, the Participation Officers Network. So what's the role of a PO? They're a mediator, they are a translator, they are also uh, believers. They work on internal and external collaborative meetings. They are around 40 issues have been worked on since the beginning of uh, 2017 until now. But what are the problems that we're trying to solve? Most important challenges we have right now are the ones that don't have a single owner. Civil servants tend to answer questions rather than solve problems when facing issues that need to be solved across ministries. And you never change things by finding the existing reality. To change something, we need to build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. So the new model that we are trying to build is the model state for the government system. And it's a service for service. And failure should be allowed and be part of the culture, as I mentioned earlier. We would like to try, and we may success, we may fail, but if we fail, we learn from it. And there are some key learnings that we have so far and that can be transformed into tips. So the first one is achieving sustainable mechanisms through institutionalization. This is the direction of implementing the PO network uh, within the executive UN and subordinate agencies. It's the national director. And you can see the date over here. Um, because we had this idea um, in late 2016. So after a year. Yeah. And then after a year, we have these directions. So you may find it this interesting because sometimes we may have direction first, then it will lead um, us towards a practice. But the reason why we have this after one year is because, as I mentioned earlier, open government is a very general concept and we need to have experiment, we need to have practice to know what kind of uh, open government we want and what kind of approaches is suitable for us. So we started experimenting different approaches to create the framework, the approaches with the civil servants, and then we find um, a more suitable way to collaborate among the um, civil servants and also with the wider stakeholders. Then based on those practice and the learnings, we will then be able to launch this direction after one year. And also the reason why, um, and also I think the benefit of having um, the direction being tested and experiment is it will lead the later on process more sustainable. And the second thing is um, it's very important to embrace inclusion and diversify evidence including human needs. So we used to use the term users, but since we are aware of, we don't see citizens as consumers. They are citizens, so then we add citizens onto the diagram. And, but sometimes we still need to think the public service that we provide are, uh, we, sometimes we still need to think uh, citizens as customers, but we need to have the awareness that when we, th we need to facilitate the conversation and see them as users, and when, when do we need to see them as citizens. So the process that we are trying to uh, experiment is in comparison to the old process. So the old process is uh, politicians and civil servants come up with policy, then it will follow by process, system development, maintenance and regulation. And sometimes citizens are the last person, uh, last people who know the regulation. And then if people are not happy about that, then they call a protest. 
like to occupy the parliament. And after that, because there are lots of uh, resources being invested in that, and maybe the parliament cannot do anything with that. So it, it may go to, it may go nowhere. And what we want to test is we want to bring users and citizens need in the beginning so we understand them better and we bring the service and policy around that. Sorry. Yeah, just wanted to ask about your use of the term citizen. Do you uh, uh, find that it may be limited, just like user was limited to consumers? Um, citizen may not encompass every person that's in Taiwan, right? You could have um, non-status individuals or, or so forth. Um, so is citizen Word yeah, so, so, yes. So um, in representative democracy, exactly as you said, there are no voters. Um, but in the e-participation system, that is uh, relaxed a lot. Um, there's no age restriction. There is actually only the restriction that uh, you have to have a valid SMS number and an email. And so even if you're not a citizen citizen, uh, you only have a resident certificate or you have a working visa for for whatever, um, as long as you can claim that you are a stakeholder, uh, you are actually defined as a kind of wider citizen. Uh, in our participatory budgeting and our other newer innovations also, we're seeing the age limit being moved to like 18 or 16 or, or whatever. So the definition of citizen is expanding in both nationalities and uh, age groups. But of course the voting for like president itself, that stays untouched. So because you asked this question, so this is the citizen that I'm referring to. Oh, yeah. So um, because we talk about collaboration, and so we need to define like who are the people who is going to join the collaboration and what kind of collaboration that we're expecting. So I think this diagram really explains um, our mindset really well. So uh, we work with each other rather than we work for or to somebody. and. We don't um, choose the service. We create the policy and service together. And we don't serve certain people. We, we are all facilitators that we facilitate each other. And we are all able to participate in um, certain things. And our relationship is interdependent, rather than independent or dependent. I think this is the idea of well, what I mean, citizen. Yeah, so, um, because we would like to be um, inclusive and respect diversity, so we listen to um, users and citizens' voice in the beginning before we do everything. And it's also very important to tailor to the way that people are comfortable with. Some people are uh, comfortable with digital tool, some people are comfortable with drawing, some people are comfortable with writing down their uh, opinions. So, so we have we have also tested different ways for people to um, give their voice and make sure that we can be inclusive um, as much as we can. Also, if there are people, if there are marginalized groups that we can barely hear their voice from the central government, we go to them and listen to their voice. And the third key learning is uh, making sure people are on the same page. So as Audrey mentioned earlier, we do um, real-time fact-fitting feelings and ideas and documentation and we check um, people's um, interpretation as well, and I think that's a town hall. Yes. <laughs> so this is the town hall that we found out uh, the conversation the, uh, between the fishermen, tourist industries, and environmental groups about if we should ban certain uh, fishing areas in, in the remote island, is, which is part of Taiwan. And we, we used two different, um, we, we actually did an experiment here. We did a space design where, because there are lots of protesters from local and 
they would like to really give their voice. But there is a concern that they, um, not everyone is able to stay throughout the whole consultation or deliberation process. And this may... Um, and we only allow one from each group anyway, so... Okay. Yeah, <laughs> so we, we have another room, live streaming, um, the, another room which has representatives from different stakeholders and Audrey act like a, a, a yes, anchor, an anchor. <laughs> <laughs> to, to re explain all the steps with different stakeholders um, in the bigger room. And we, it's very important to check um, all of the information real time because when people um, they express their views, the language they use uh, can be interpreted into many ways. So if we can write it down and double check with the person, we can make sure that we get all the things right. Because uh, getting things right, um, collecting, collecting data in the beginning, uh, if we collect all the things right, I think it will lead us to a better and more solid direction. So this is the outcome where we map out um, different problem statements, solutions that respond to those problem statements, and facts. So this is kind of like a context of the issue where we can all see where we are coming from, from different perspectives. And this is a very uh, important way to show we have shared vision, we have shared concern, and there are a, a perspective that personally I don't know before, but because of the process of making all different information, we are able to take different sides easily. And the fourth thing is creating a healthy environment for, for constructive discussion. Uh, this is like um, the room I mentioned earlier. Yeah, this is the town hall, uh, yeah. the larger room that I'm in in current. So everybody can protest or whatever, but it doesn't disrupt the small room conversation. And because everybody wants to watch the movie anyway. So the protester would get maybe 10 minutes and everybody just like, and, and because uh, whatever they say would be put into the context on Slido and then fed back into the smaller room. So they still get their voice heard, but they cannot in any way disrupt the conversation in the smaller room. But this is smaller room. Yeah. 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 So I will talk about our next challenge. and and. I think there are like interesting questions that we're thinking about. So how might we bridge those outcomes from collaborative meetings with policy, um, with policy making decisions? And also, <laughs> when policies are being created, formed, how might we meaningfully include and collaborate with citizens at decision making and delivery stages? So as I mentioned the stages before, it's very easy to include different stakeholders' voice during the discovery stage, like data collection and data structuration and co-creation development part. But once we are agreed with certain directions that we are going towards, we are going to design uh, specific policies or service that respond to those problems. Sometimes it take over by the smaller groups in the government where wider citizens may not be able to join the process of decision making and delivery. And I think this can be like a common sense for, for lots of people seeing like um, that, that's where, why we have professionals. But there's also another debate saying, it, is this not possible? Can we be more um, open for more ideas? Can we create the future we, uh, all together like the diagram I showed? Um, on the citizen side, we are all participants, uh, we are all facilitators that facilitate our future together. And the last thing is, how might we measure impact meaningfully? Uh, as somebody already mentioned, and I actually have a slide, I, I skipped that, but since there are uh, people mentioned earlier, I will open it up. So, um, this is um, our possible direction so to address um, measuring impact. So the possible direction is uh, measuring impact 
by an account of policy making. Um, there are different stages, and at different stages, as, uh, as the stages framework I mentioned earlier, we, we will produce different outcomes, different documents uh, at different stages. And all of the things that we do must um, respond to transparency, participation, accountability, and inclusion. And we can see at different stages based on our outcome, at what level we are responding to those pillars then we will be able to, once we have all of the documents um, being accumulated um, step by step from different stages, we will be able to see the impact itself. So, and th this, this document can be, because it's based on the timeline, so we can see um, the whole like, transcript, the transparency of policy making process and we were debating like what's the best way to show impact, but maybe just by showing the the track, the raw data of what we have achieved is the way to show impact. So this is still a prototype. <laughs> yeah. So we're because this is not like setting stone levels because for each document we may have different criteria to those those outcomes. So for example, we have transcripts from different meetings and we have like co co creation outcomes and we, we cannot use the same criteria to measure these things. So we need to have um, specific levels, criteria towards those outcomes. But we haven't figured this out yet. Yeah, but <laughs> broadly speaking, uh, I mean, in uh, the participation, the ladder of participation, uh, it's non-participation, tokenism, and citizen power. This is like standard uh, public administration text. So what we're trying to do is that we're distilling uh, the different uh, pillars into something like the ladder of participation so that people can objectively judge whether some part of it is just token participation and some part of it is actually partnership and citizen control. Uh, and each part would have its own KPIs and we're developing this not by our own but also internationally. Uh, but this is uh, of course a, a active research topic. I think the entire open government partnership is, is focusing on, on this problem. So we're also use uh, international metrics where it, are, where it already exists and invent new ones where it isn't. Yes. And there are some other info in the, in the slide, there are links, which um, we also have a headquarter that uh, accumulate our toolkit training and uh, training materials and a list of other materials from across the world. And also there is a, an article about a brief introduction on the peer network. So peer network and on the stakeholder collaboration workshop, uh, we would like to use these approaches to create alternatives for civic participation and opportunities for collaboration across the government and onto wider stakeholders. People can have another opinion to have a say apart from voting, protesting on the street, or making polarized conversation on the internet. So I think it's the I think the most important thing that we always embrace in our mind is government need to trust citizens first. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so we still have some time before our lunch, uh, and so for this section, uh, I would encourage uh, all of you are have some experience with this facilitation anyway. So uh, before lunch, for 20 minutes or so, please use whatever facilitation method you're comfortable with uh, to reflect on um, what the current practice is. 
uh, and that like what what are your reflections on the kind of work you do based on these um, provocations or inspirations? And does Alex have something to add to this? Uh, and I think in terms of focus for the facility question, I think uh, two of the more salient things that I was hearing, and please feel free to add, was uh, how we're currently measuring some of the process, like, some of the successes. Like, what does it mean when something is like successfully participatory? Um, so what are the measures we currently, and also in terms of process, do you have any accounts of like what's been working for you in your field or like your line of work, um, where you've been seeing more and better participation in whatever sense, um, so sharing that with the group. Uh, we also have a group of three currently. Uh, I would want to join, but I am just going to be setting up some food uh, in preparation for lunch. So if there's a six person, is this a six person group over here? Can we have one person come over and you know, join here? So we can all person. Oh, great. Uh, sure, whatever you're, you guys Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Sounds good. There's four groups there. Um, cool. So let's take 15 minutes and then group.